Hi guys, it's Sally and Josie, the IOD sisters. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna transform this beautiful old gal into something fun, a little bit pinkalicious. at the colors. What we're going to do here is our first coat we're going to go on with, like we said, the Scandinavian pink. And as you can see, look up close. This is look up close. gorgeous, coral beautiful pink. color. Mm -hmm. And then our last coat's going to be this slightly cooler, but ever so soft Antoinette. And we're going to put a lot of sheerness in this because we want a lot of the warmth and the depth of the Scandinavian to come through. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead. And get started. Get started. Ooh, I'm going to. Now, it is not in my nature to take the time to put this in a, another container so that you avoid contamination, but I do it so that I'm being a good example. <laughs> <laughs> so right on. Let's get on. Let's get on it. All right. We've cleaned this up. We did. You know this. Most of you have watched some of the painting videos and know that there's minimal prep required. This is clean and that's, we're good. I took the hardware off right. this time, but I don't always even do that. We're moving in broad, loose strokes. We're not trying to get uh, smooth or straight or perfect finish. I'm going for texture here. It's kind of nice when the people who painted before you were messy because then you don't have to feel guilty about Ooh. being messy. Actually, normally people would t t put a little piece of tape there. But it's already painted. <laughs> but it's already painted, so. so we're gonna go with this. Ooh, I love this color. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. oh, so pretty. And it'll dry even just a hair. Yeah. Deeper. Than the awesome thing about chalk paint is that you can get so much depth and texture with all of the different techniques and movement of the brush and different mm -hmm. color play. You can just layer and layer and layer and get something completely different every time. Yes. What's cool about these brushes, which you don't really think about until you're using them, is they differ from flat or chip brushes in that they have a, a substantial uh, strength to them. So like stippling mm -hmm. or getting into crevices where you need to work it in and do some of this or some of this, it can handle it without flim flamming around. Flim flamming, look yeah, that up. It's exactly. It is a word. Word. Word up. Word to your mother. <laughs> All right, so what we've done is we took our light, light pink, our Antoinette, and it's three parts paint to one part water. So we want it to be heavier than a wash, like the antiquing washes you might do, uh, but much lighter than the paint as it comes. So we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna have a spray bottle and a damp, the blue shop cloths that I like. If you don't have this, you can use, you know, a t-shirt, something that's limp free and doesn't have a heavy uh, pattern in it. Okay, we're gonna go in loose and we're not going to have um, a strong direction. We're going to go in many directions. We do wanna work it into the nooks and crannies. So I'm gonna do half of this right now because it's pretty forgiving. Um, and it's, you know, I mean, it'll set up depending on the conditions. If it's hot outside or you have, you know, warm wind, then you'll want to be more aware of that. You don't want it to fully set up before you have the chance to get in and move some of your color around. Using my spray bottle, spray bottle and cloth, I'm going to go in and just get some areas damp. But in a couple areas, I am going to actually go on heavy so that I get a little bit of drip action. So you can see it breaking up and pulling. 
just choose a couple spots. You don't want it all the way across. So what I actually do is I let that set up for a few minutes um, so that when I go back in, I'm not removing the drip work that we just put in there, but I'm able to soften it and uh, get a softened version of it. So this has been setting up with the fan on it for a couple minutes, and the reason I did that, like I said, is I want to be able to get in there and um, soften it without completely obliterating it. So for example, if I dab on there, I can soften and get um, some of that, the drip, the part that takes longer to set up is gonna lift for us. So I'm just going in and dabbing and kind of revealing and softening. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in and do a little soft blending. When I'm blending, I'm doing a combination of pat and twist, as well as um, I'm going to soften it with some just really light strokes. But what you don't want is you don't want a pattern. You don't want it to look like dab, 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 dab. So you, you know, it takes a little practice to, to get that feel for where it looks balanced and it's not um, blotty, but it, after a little practice, you'll get the hang of it and you'll see what you love. And so you can see a gentle pull without, with hardly any pressure is just clouding that wash and softening that. You hit these highs here, really pops that. So beautiful. All right, I'm gonna continue this on and then we will let it dry and get to the next step. So, as you can see, we've got this wash on here that's just beautiful. It's really got that, um, you know, a lot of color play, some dripping, and it's going to even be a little more subtle when we add the next steps to it we're going to be adding our transfers. We are using our Redow transfer. We're gonna use this one. And a portion of this is going to go right here in this center area. And then we are going to use the Le Petit Rosier and we are going to put that around in this area. So what we're gonna do is we're going to cut this into portions and I'm going to tape it into place to hold it still while I apply them. You always want to keep the actual transfer with the backing until you're ready to apply it so that it doesn't get dirty or dusty and make it difficult to adhere. All right, let's get started. I decided that I am going to bring it right about here. So I'm going to cut it here first, and this portion will be what I am doing down there. So I'm going to cut right underneath this word here. Then I'm going to cut this in half because I'm going to have one half go on either side of that. So half is about right here. You always want to be careful also not to let this touch onto anything except for its backing so you don't want it to touch itself. You don't want to be doing it in a windy environment. So this 
this, I'm gonna monkey around with it a little bit to get it how I want it. I'm gonna be doing it right about in here. So, I'm going to get a little piece of tape. Now when your drawers are flush like this, sometimes you can go right on and without cutting it into individual pieces. When um, that's not the case, sometimes you have to pre-cut it for each drawer that is. going to get it right in here, somewhat lined up. And I'm going to cut out this section here. And I'm going to set this aside because this is usable for something else. I'm going to go ahead and secure it down a little better. Start applying it. So I've got it all transferred and I'm going to take the backing off. There we go. And you want to, with a clean, dry hand, go through and just smooth over any little bits that may be loose still. And then I like to use one of these uh, shop towels to just kind of gently burnish down anything that is up, not laid down. Gently though, so that you're just giving it a chance to uh, adhere to the surface more strongly without, you know, pulling it up or tearing it. It's a very fine, um, thin material. That's why it's so cool, why it distresses so well, and why it looks painted on. This is the rose off of our Radau set of decor transfers that I want to use. I'm not gonna be able to fit the whole rose in, but I know that I need to kind of position it, so I'm going to cut the whole rose out, and then I am going to fine tune that when I get it centered over the area. So I am going to look at it and kind of position it. I'm thinking kind of right like that. Yes, perfect. Being very careful not to touch the back to the back. It's gonna be a little bit tricky to place because it goes over and I want it to run off. I want to do it right like that, I think. Oh, isn't that gonna be pretty? Like that. If I move it down a wee bit, actually, there we go. Commit. Put a spot right there. It'll kind of hold it, and then I can cut this excess off. But I'm, I'm gonna leave a little margin because I, I want to make sure that it reaches over the whole edge. Get this positioned and taped, and repeat what I did with the other. So I peeled the backing off, and the areas where it went over, you can see there's a little bit of the material overlapping. So after I've used my hand to gently make sure that it's all down, okay, which is a little tricky in these, these uh, routered little decorative grooves, takes a little bit of finesse. I'm gonna take my fine sanding sponge and gently do this to eliminate that bit. Just gently so I'm not tugging at it and moving away, not into the design. So 
same here. Gently. Gently getting that excess off. Gently burnish, make sure everything's down so that you're not tugging. Now, we are going to distress using a clean, fine sanding sponge. We're gonna go over and just lightly distress. And soften the text. So we got this all distressed down and ready to go, but we decided that what was really missing was a little bit of bling. We decided that we want to do a gold leaf rim around this and then a little bit on the feet. So that's what we're gonna do. Start by applying what's called adhesive size. And this is the old world brand. There's a few different brands and you apply it with a brush and it's milky when it's wet and then when it sets up, it uh, gets clear and you wanna let it get set up before you apply your leaf. I'm gonna let that tack up for a moment and then we'll apply the leaf. Okay, now this is all clear and ready to apply the leaf. So we are going to open up our leaf. If you have any adhesive on your hand, it's gonna stick, so be careful about that. And we're going to just go in and be very gently apply it. There's nothing quite like gold leaf. Doesn't that look amazing with these uh, corally pink? And then first go through and apply the rest. So as you can see, we got that gilding up and we buffed it, after buffing it with the soft, brush, went in with a clean, dry, blue shop towel and just burnished it in. That also softens just a little bit of the shine. Look at these legs. Is that fabulous? I mean, gorgeous, beautiful. Now we're going to start sealing it, and I'm using a clear wax to seal it. And I'm going to go on really lightly, with just a little bit in it, getting any excess off of the brush, and start brushing it in. Really light. You don't wanna to go too heavy. That, I hear, is one of the most common mistakes is going on too heavy with your wax. So I'm gonna go on over the whole thing just like that and then I'm going to take my clean shop towel and buff. You can also use a lint-free, soft, uh, like t-shirt material and go in and buff and you're gonna get a really nice satiny sheen on there. Let's finish it up.
Thank you.